Hello friends, welcome back to another episode by Engineering Today, and hope you're all having a great time. We were away for a few days enjoying a break from the routine updates of the Starbase facility. Little did we know that during our absence, exciting developments unfolded, propelling the facility to new heights of progress and innovation. Now with eager anticipation, let's look at the incredible transformations that have taken place. At the Starbase facility, there have been numerous exciting developments taking place. At the LC, something fascinating occurred as the chopsticks were raised and the SQD swung away. This allowed B9, or Booster 9, to be safely nestled between the chopsticks and placing it on the OLM. Now our attention goes to Booster 9 and Starship 25. These two magnificent marvels of engineering are shining brightly, reflecting the sun's warm rays. They're poised and ready, awaiting their call to embark on a daring quest. Meanwhile, over at the rocket garden, some significant changes have been happening. S-27 was scrapped and sliced in half, presumably for specific purposes. On the other hand, S-30's payload section has been moved towards High Bay, where it will likely undergo further preparations. The lifting jig has also been moved to High Bay, getting ready to position the payload section properly. Furthermore, a LOX dump has been successfully relocated from the area between gates D-2 and D-3 and subsequently from the LC. Moreover, the preparation for lifting the last section of MB2 on level 4 is currently underway. Once this crucial step is completed, LR11000 will be extended to continue the project's progress. On the 18th of July, an interesting event took place as the Fire X system was activated under test conditions. This system is SpaceX's previous fire suppression system, which they used before the IFT system was implemented. Recently, there was a significant development with Ship 28. A move alert was issued, indicating that the ship needed to be relocated. To do this, two specialized vehicles, known as Self-Propelled Modular Transporters SPMTs, were brought in, along with their counterweights, which help balance the load during transportation. These two SPMTs, designed to handle a limited amount of weight, three blocks per SPMT, were carefully positioned in the High Bay area where Ship 28 was currently located. The next steps involved moving Ship 28 to the middle of the High Bay. The skilled operators maneuvered the SPMTs to carefully transport the ship to its new position. Now, here comes the interesting part. This time, the plan was likely to place Ship 28 onto something called the Puck Shucker. The Puck Shucker is likely a specialized device or platform designed to hold and support the ship in its new location. And now, let me tell you about the amazing Starship Water Deluge System. Recently, it had taken its first full test, and it was truly a sight to behold. When the Starship Super Heavy rocket takes off, with its 33 Raptor engines producing an astounding 17 million pounds of thrust, it generates intense heat and noise. But the water deluge system is here to protect the Starship rocket launch mount and the launch pad from these extreme conditions. During ignition and liftoff, the water sprays onto the launch pad, creating an impressive scene. In the recent test, they used thousands of gallons of water, delivered in less than a minute. While it may sound like a lot, it's actually only about half of what other launch platforms like NASA's SLS use in their deluge system. NASA's system releases about 450,000 gallons of water to control the energy during rocket ignition and liftoff. However, SpaceX's system has the potential to become even more powerful. This was just the first test, and more are on the way. Water tankers have been arriving all day, preparing for the next round of tests. We can expect another one to happen sometime this week, and it's sure to be even more impressive. The water is directed to specific spots where it's needed most, to absorb the intense heat from the engine plume. The water pressure has to be strong enough to flow against the rocket exhaust pressure, but the steel structure can handle most of the exhaust pressure directly. Elon Musk will likely share some cool stats about the water usage per second and the water pressure in the system. Knowing Musk's reputation for pushing boundaries, this will undoubtedly be an engineering marvel. 
Now let's talk about the purge test conducted by SpaceX at their launch site recently. At first glance, it may appear intimidating, but rest assured, it serves a meaningful and essential purpose. During this test, SpaceX took a significant step in ensuring their systems were in top-notch condition for future launches. The main focus was on the high-pressure gas system used to cool down the steel plates with water. Now, you might be wondering why such a test was necessary. Well, it served a dual purpose. Firstly, it was undoubtedly a test to evaluate the effectiveness and reliability of their high-pressure gas system. This kind of system is essential for keeping those water-cooled steel plates functioning optimally during launch preparations. However, the second purpose was equally interesting. This powerful purge also had the added benefit of cleaning out some of the newly installed gas lines. Think of it as a thorough cleansing process that helps remove any potential debris or contaminants that might have accumulated during installation. This ensures that the gas lines are free from obstructions, which is crucial for their smooth and efficient operation. Meanwhile, amidst the preparation of IFT-2 for Ship 25, there exists a fascinating test article known as Ship 24.2. It's earned a reputation as a confusing entity with an equally confusing name and a history filled with puzzling twists and turns. However, thanks to the insights provided by the Ring Watchers, fellow enthusiasts of the Starship project, we can delve into the purpose and structure of this peculiar creation. Ship 24.2 is essentially a seven ring tall structure comprising three main sections. At the top, there's a ring with a dome featuring 24 external attachment points. Below this, we find the ship payload bay, which interestingly includes a Pez dispenser rack. There's a bottom ring with a hatch on its side. Curiously, the height of this seven ring tall test article perfectly aligns with the newly configured nose cone cage, indicating a deliberate connection. The top ring of ship 24.2 has been the subject of much speculation in recent months. Many theories emerged, such as it being related to the HLS lander or hot staging. However, it now appears that this ring serves as a testing interface. On top of that ring, there's a rusty plate with four attachment points, seemingly placed at random. Yet, upon closer examination, it becomes evident that these attachment points align perfectly with the new piston mounts on the updated nose cone cage. Furthermore, the 24 protrusions on the side of the top ring appear to be pull points for pistons penetrating through the hull. The dome at the top serves multiple potential purposes. It might simulate a nose cone, allowing for light pressurization and adding structural rigidity. Notably, the payload bay at the bottom wouldn't normally have a concave dome underneath. The payload bay itself holds a surprise, a Pez dispenser. While it previously had a sliding door, it's been removed. The door would possibly be reinstalled in the future as the necessary seals and actuators remain intact. The bottom ring is a replica of the ring that typically sits below the payload bay, assembled with the forward dome. Strikingly, both this ring and the top ring's pathfinder were brought outside simultaneously during the production phase. The significance of Ship 24.2 lies in SpaceX's ambition to use Starship to carry Starlink satellites into space. It represents a vital step in their pursuit of this goal. Whether one agrees or disagrees with the interpretations, time will eventually reveal the truth. And as always, the progress in space exploration remains an intriguing and captivating journey. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.